All right. Good afternoon. Thank you all for coming. I am Edward Bohm, Holden County's Emergency Management Director, and the people with us today are a few of our newly formed pro coronavirus defense team members here in Holden County. Following Governor DeWine and Lieutenant Governor Houston's virtual meeting with Paulding County leaders two weeks ago, we formed a team of community leaders to get the word out to our communities and get the messaging to our 18,600 plus residents, individuals that work, go to school, and worship here in Paulding County. I want to emphasize that the coronavirus defense team is not set up to take away individuals' rights issue local ordinances or to interfere with one's religious beliefs. We formed a group to, of individual leaders to impress upon the fact that here in Paulding County things are changing for the worse and we need to change with it. We need to wear our face coverings wherever we go out in public, social distance even more so than what we have before including with family and friends. Avoid crowded places, especially indoors, and other measures will be discussed with our health department. We are not taking away individuals' rights, as I said. What we're trying to do is not take away our children's ability to be in school, play sports, and especially to continue to share time with family and friends and the people that we care about the most. It took five months for us to reach 118 positive cases here in Paulding County. 26 days later, we doubled that number, and in the last 28 days, we have quintupled that number to over 615. Worse yet, we had zero number of deaths up until October 14th. We were one of four counties in the state of Ohio with that distinction. However, we have not been able to sustain that and currently we have 11 known deaths. As Governor DeWine has said, we are in this together. Now I'd like to take the opportunity to introduce Bill Edwards from the Paulding County Health Department. Thanks, uh, Ed. <clears throat> we're currently seeing unprecedented COVID-19 numbers across Ohio, and this includes Paulding County. As of today, we estimate as many as one in 50 county residents could be contagious with COVID-19. Because of this, we're urging all county residents to limit the number and size of gatherings. This is even more important as we enter the holiday season. We have seen increases in the weeks that follow holidays throughout this pandemic, including Halloween. The Paulding uh, County total cases have almost doubled. If we go into the Thanksgiving holiday with increasing cases, we could face even more substantial surges in December and at the end of the year. For us to reverse this trend, Paulding County residents must work together to respond to this critical time. With the availability of the COVID-19 vaccines in sight, we're asking everyone to remain vigilant, to make every effort to reduce and prevent the spread of this virus in Baldwin County. Like many of you, we're growing wary of the COVID-19 virus, but now's not the time to give up. Now's the time to persevere in doing things that prevent the disease. Wearing a mask, six feet apart for social distancing. If you're sick, stay home. Look at our gatherings, and again, the number of people that are at our gatherings. We'll see our cases retreat and our community continue to recover. Last week, Paulding County was elevated to a level three red in the Ohio Public Health Advisory System, and it remains so this week. As a red county, we're under a state of advisory to limit <clears throat> any gatherings of any size as much as possible. The health department encourages you as much as possible 
together with just your household. It is a distinct privilege to be with you during this time. As your health department, we greatly appreciate your continued partnership and resilience as our community continues to navigate this pandemic. Thank you for your consideration. We look forward to a time in the now, not so distant future, when we'll all be able to put this pandemic behind us. Until then, stay strong, stay safe, be healthy. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Ron Gody. I'm the CEO of Pauline County Hospital, and I'm here to ask the community to help us over the next three or four months as we try and get to the point where we get the um, vaccine for the COVID um, that pandemic uh, out. Right now, the hospital's census is over half of it is COVID any day uh, as we treat the patients who come to our facility. And if the community can help us by wearing their masks, social distance, washing your hands, uh, avoid large gatherings, um, it can really help us get through the next three or four months until the vaccine starts taking its uh, benefit to the community. So with your help, we can continue to provide the service to the community that we're here to do, and that's to promote your health and well-being. So please wear your mask. Thank you. We'll certainly take any questions from our hands. We've got two of our school superintendents here as well that can answer any questions that you might have in regards to that. Can I just put a mic up there? Yeah, go right ahead. No. <laughs> 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 Exclusive to Yeah, I'm good. Good. Yep. Okay. Um, so this task force that's been created to help combat COVID-19 spread in the county um, is are these the members that are going to help go around to the businesses and if they're struggling to enforce uh, enforce mask requirements in their businesses that you guys are going to help? No, uh, actually, up until a couple weeks ago, the health department was charged with that. Uh, a new governor's order has put the Bureau of Workers' Compensation in charge. There's an 800 number through the Ohio Department of Health. You call it a complaint to the Ohio Department of Health hotline, and then the Bureau of Workers' Compensation, they have staff that are going to come out and do the investigations all over Ohio, Pauling County included. And you mentioned that up until a couple of weeks ago, you guys were in charge of that. What were you seeing in businesses across Pauling County? When the mask order was first in effect, we saw great compliance. And then the county citizens kind of got weary and started wearing the masks less and less. Uh, when we reached the level three red alert level, the, the next day I saw a lot more compliance with the mask wearing, which is great. Out of curiosity, I feel like you guys have touched on it numbers went up really quickly what was your when you started seeing those numbers climb really quickly in the county what was going through your head so we need to do a better job of practicing what we preach getting the word out again wear your mask wash your hands stay home if you're sick uh, social distance as much as you can I was wondering about the curfew um, that is in place and how you guys are going to get around that with businesses um, um, in town here. Again, it's the same answer to the previous question. If there's complaints in regards to businesses that are staying open past the curfew, again, it'll be the Bureau of Workers' Compensation will be having inspectors go out and do the investigations. That's all. And, yeah, I have a couple questions. Okay. If you don't mind. Go right ahead. So, obviously the role of the emergency manager has uh, many facets to it. Uh, talk to me about the unique dif difficulties of trying to 
manage a pandemic? With anything that is expected of the unexpected is what seems to fall under the category of what emergency management is responsible for. And with this pandemic, initially we had our uh, health and uh, guidelines in place uh, and we immediately saw that we were going to have to build upon that as we went along and we worked with the hospital as well as the health department in being able to do that. With everybody uh, in the same situation with not having PPE, that was the first task at hand of getting as much of it we could get to our health providers such as the hospital, our nursing homes, uh, the first responders, especially EMS, and that was our first task. Uh, and we partnered with the private sector as well as the state of Ohio EMA and was able to do that. As this has gone on and we are able to get more information uh, about this virus, it has allowed us to uh, focus on what we can handle. And that is getting the messaging out to people and working with local businesses, the schools, as well as our churches to be able to minimize the impact that it has. And unfortunately now the numbers are just astronomical in, in the situation. How exactly might you guys go about helping schools and churches and businesses and things like that combat this spread? Because you, you, you talk generally that that's your guys' purpose, but um, what sort of steps are you guys looking to take to do that? Well, in working together, this team, that's why we included the schools in the, our religious community as well, because that's where our gatherings are at. And our schools have done an excellent job. Our numbers are nowhere near what was expected. And that's uh, on their planning part that has allowed that to happen. We did have a, uh, an incident a few weeks ago and that has since passed. And we're looking a lot better that way. As far as our uh, religious uh, community, we seem to be working a little bit better with them and getting the messaging out, as I said in our uh, initial statement, we do not want to tread on anybody's religious beliefs whatsoever, but we do see the need to get messaging out to them to say, hey, uh, we have to be more cognizant of what is going on and that certainly gathering of people and making sure if they are, they're wearing masks, social distancing, and have the proper sanitizing uh, issues in hand. And do, do you feel that it's I guess, and I don't, I don't want to place blame here, but is it your guys' fault? Big air quotes here. Your guys' <laughs> fault. The messaging that is it the lack of messaging been put out, or is it do you feel it's more of the lack of listening for some of the public? To be quite honest, I think it is overwhelming the public with the different messaging with a election that took place that certainly impacted. Uh, our situation not only here in Paulding County but across the United States as a whole of overwhelming uh, information that people did not really know what to believe and that's hopefully what our uh, committee uh, or excuse me our uh, coronavirus defense team can do is work through all the bureaucracy and information that's been put out and narrow it down to a message that will impact the residents of Paulding County and hopefully allow us to get control over this overwhelming number we're seeing right now. I know schools um, are one place that we that we looked at and they're doing pretty well with containing the spread. Um, I know a lot of other counties in the area, um, in Indiana and here in Ohio, are looking at maybe uh, trying to do what they're doing in the schools into the community is that something that you guys are trying to do as well well we had our first uh, meeting last week and we plan to meet on a weekly basis to come up with uh, ideas more so than solutions and the reason I say that is that we've got to get involved with everybody and until we get that we're not going to have solutions, we're going to have ideas, and we've got to make that 
happen here as quickly as possible. And certainly, as I said, our school system has been an excellent uh, example of making a difference uh, in what our numbers could be uh, and certainly haven't been to this point. And I know this is a very tight-knit community. Do you think that with that, it is going to be a bit easier to kind of get everybody on board? I hope it is. I, as uh, Bill Edwards mentioned, as soon as we went to red, people really took this seriously, and, and it's, a, it's unfortunate that it took to that point that we had to wait that long, but now you don't see very many people without a mask on, and certainly we hope with the holidays coming upon us that they'll emphasize the fact that we'll minimize uh, the number of people in attendance at better, various gatherings and especially in family situations. Ed, there's a question online here from people who are watching. Are there consequences to individuals who do not quarantine if they're ordered to do so? Uh, that would be Bill's question to ask, answer. Yes, there are. And to answer the question, uh, a quarantine order and isolation order is uh, it's in the Ohio Revised Code. I can't specifically quote this section. I think it's 3701 dash something or another. And there are various penalties if the quarantine and isolation orders aren't followed. Okay. How has this impacted our hospital, our county hospital? Um, the hospital has been impacted uh, since October by our inpatient volume has quadrupled um, since uh, October 1st. Uh, in the first six months, we had very few inpatient admissions at Baldwin County Hospital. Even though we were having a few cases every week in the county, um, the patients tended to stay at home and recover themselves. But since October 1st, well over 50% of all of our volume in the hospital in the hospital has been COVID. So the hospital is busier. We're using more PPP than ever. The EMA department has been helping us a lot get the equipment we need to care for our patients. But if we don't get this a little bit under control right now, um, the resources will be uh, spread very thin going forward here mm -hmm. if we don't get this under control. What would you say the percentage is of people who are in Paulding County Hospital that are from assisted living or nursing home versus out in the public? Um, the population, if I was to give you an estimate right now, well over half of the population we get in the hospital might come from um, assisted living, nursing homes, things like that. You know, unfortunately the aged and people with uh, comorbidities are much more likely to be admitted than the um, middle-aged younger adults who get it and pretty much all of them recover at home, so. Is there a plan for schools if if there's a shutdown or, or does each school take care of that? We, we have plans in place. We have plans in place. It's going to be a case by case. Mostly it would come, uh, Bryce, because of staffing. Okay. The, you know, we've, we've dealt many years with a large number of kids being out during the flu season. Um, so we can do that. But we, but once again, this has tended to affect staff more from a, from the quarantining piece of it, as opposed to those affected, um, than it is anything else. But that would be where our bigger problem would come. But we plan to stay open. Two weeks ago, Paulding was shut down, mm -hmm. right? No, just or, the high school. Just the high school was closed. Right. They were doing online learning. Right. And was that due to the number of cases in the school, or was that yeah. due to what you were saying? Correct. It was staffing. It, okay. It if was it to were the just staff. the cases, um, uh, we have uh, about one and a half percent. We've had one and a half percent of our student population has tested positive. Um, less than one percent are grades K through eight. So it's it's more of a high school concern, and that was a staffing a staffing concern at the high school. The numbers are very similar for us too. Okay. Um, as far as the percentages, what Ken said, I looked at them the other day, they're pretty much the same. And in regard to the staffing, we're in the same boat. Um, making sure that we can get subs for those staff that typically are quarantined is really what we're seeing get hit with. 
Anything else? I think I have just one more question okay. just about preparing for, I know we talked, we, you guys touched on this a little bit, but there was um, just one more about just preparing for Thanksgiving. Just one more, I don't know who would be good enough for that. I just wanted to just, um, uh, I guess, could you just tell um, people what you would recommend for them with the upcoming holiday season um, and just kind of how you all are working to kind of um, let everybody have, you know, a safe holiday um, and just be socially distant and things like that. Yeah, keep your crew to a few. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we want everybody to enjoy the holidays. I want to enjoy the holidays. I know everybody in here wants to enjoy the holidays, but we want everybody to enjoy them safely. Um, the COVID-19 virus is spread person to person. So the more people you have in your crew, the more chance there is to share it amongst yourselves. So again, keep your gathering small. I mean, limit it to only your household if you can. I mean, try to do virtual Thanksgivings. I know it's, it seems kind of far-fetched to me, but uh, try to limit as much uh, contact with each other as you can. I mean, be safe by the distancing, uh, mass help, and again, if you can't taste or smell, stay away from the Thanksgiving dinner. That's a, that's a telltale sign of COVID-19 is when you lack the taste and smell. Bill, can you give me a, an idea of how many tests are going to be available on the 30th and some details to the people who are watching? Uh, there's going to be a pop-up testing event at the Baldwin County Fairgrounds November 30th uh, from 10 to 2. Uh, the testing supplies are limited. I think it's going to only be limited by how many people we can get in and out of the facility. Uh, we're asking people that are mobile to park where they usually do when they come up to the fair in the grassy area. Uh, if you're handicapped and have mobility issues, pull into the fairgrounds themselves. Uh, pull up alongside the building. There will be marked for handicap. Uh, the National Guard will come out and administer the tests from there. Uh, it all depends on the turnout. I mean, for a population our size, they thought like 300, but then we've given them other estimates where it could be more than 500 since we haven't had the pop-up testing in Baldwin County as of yet. I just wanted to clarify real quick. You had mentioned that your current hospital census is daily is around 50% COVID-19 cases. Correct. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. That, that is that. correct. Got that right. Okay. Mm -hmm.